Welcome to this tutorial on intubation of the critically ill, isolated patient. In this tutorial, we will view a stepwise approach to securing the airway of a patient with respiratory failure, secondary to coronavirus 19. A similar approach can be taken for other kinds of infectious illnesses that require person protective equipment for air sizing procedures, such as endotracheal intubation. Preparation will start with a pre-brief, where plans will be discussed in a systematic fashion according to the Edmonton Zone Emergency slash Critical Care Intubation Checklist. Endotracheal intubation should ideally be performed by the most experienced healthcare provider available, which may include intending intensivist, an anesthesiologist, or a critical care fellow. A minimum number of people should be involved at this stage, and backup healthcare providers can be available outside the room should the need arise. If a difficult airway is anticipated, a difficult airway cart or other standby equipment can be brought to the area, and this equipment can be brought into the room as needed. Proper application of personal protective equipment should be verified by an independent observer prior to entry into the patient room. The additional use of goggles can be considered given the potential for expectorated secretions to flow around front covering face shields. These goggles will, will need complete disinfection after they are used. Okay, so I'm going to just do a final check before we go in. So if you could stand and I'm going to have a look at your gloves. So your gloves are coming off, so I'm going to make sure that they're actually pulled all the way up. I can help you with that. Make sure your sleeves are done. If you can turn around, I'm going to tie your gown up a little tighter. Just make sure it doesn't come down when you're in. The bottom part of your gown is tied. You've got your hood on, okay? Next. Your gloves look good. You can turn around. Looks great. Gloves look good. Turn around. Looks great. Okay, we're ready to go. Ready? Once the team is in the room, they will review plans for monitoring, patient positioning, non-invasive pre -oxygenation, plans for medication administration, ensure all the relevant equipment is present. Maximizing pre oxygenation is encouraged as patients with hypoxemic respiratory failure usually have poor oxygenation reserves. The current recommendations are high flow nasal cannula at 15 liters and non-breather mask at 15 liters. The use of bag valve mask ventilation via face mask is reserved for situations where non-invasive oxygen delivery is failing to reduce the risk of aerosolization. The best approach to medication administration will be determined by the most experienced healthcare practitioner on an individual basis. To minimize risk of coughing and aerosol generation, deep sedation and coincident neuromuscular paralysis is encouraged when clinically appropriate, unless conditions exist that require a different strategy. This may include a predicted difficult airway. In the standard kit, fentanyl, ketamine, propofol, rocuronium, preloaded phenylephrine, and premixed norepinephrine will be prepared outside the room and available in the medication tray. Dosing for fentanyl, ketamine, and rocuronium will depend on the patient's weight. A standard list of equipment is outlined in the Edmonton Zone Emergency slash Critical Care Intubation Checklist, but includes a glidoscope with a three or four blade, an endotracheal tube preloaded on a rigid stylet that is lubricated, a flexible stylet, a syringe for inflation of the cuff, a laryngoscope, an NG tube with tape, and a bougie. Video laryngoscopy is heavily encouraged as a standard method for intubation in this patient population as it minimizes the need to look directly down the airway unless contraindications exist for this approach. The medication will be administered for rapid sequence intubation. As noted, bag valve mask ventilation will be avoided unless the patient has life-threatening desaturation. The intubator will wait the full 60 seconds for post-paralytic administration to ensure complete neuromuscular blockade. Next, the intubator will secure the area under video guidance. Once inserted to the appropriate depth, endotracheal tube placement can be confirmed with a combination of end tidal, CO2, chest x-ray, and or point-of-care ultrasound. Once successfully intubated, the cup will be inflated by the intubator, and the circuit will be checked prior to initializing ventilation. At this stage, the nasogastric tube will also be inserted to minimize the number of encounters. The sequence is now complete. If the patient is stable post-intubation, the team can exit the room and doff their PPE as monitored by an observer. 